Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm diving into an exciting new DIY project that's going to take my slot car tracks to a new level. So far I have used a single screen setup where I display the race results on this screen while the cars race on the track. But to improve everything I'm going to add two additional screens and I'm also going to place this homemade, just cheaply homemade stand. As a race enthusiast, I've always wanted a way to display race results and tournament standings in real time. That's why I've decided to build a custom wooden floor stand that can hold not one, not two, but three screens. From measuring and cutting the wood to assembling the stand, you'll get a front row seat to the entire journey. Once the screens are in place, this stand will become the ultimate hub for my slot car track, displaying race results on the main screen and tournament standings on the others. My current setup is actually great. This works flawlessly, we can run races and everything's just okay. But one of the drawbacks is that it's very obvious that this is DIY. I have homemade this and I did it in a rush. So I'm definitely going to do something about how this stuff looks. I'm also going to take a look at all of the stuff that actually worked on this setup, of this construction. And then I'm going to integrate those into the new one while I fix all of the problems I had with this. So let's just start by taking a quick look at what actually worked. The screen worked. This large screen is perfect for displaying the race result live during racing. Behind the setup I have a shelf for a laptop. And this actually also works very well if I can find a laptop that can support free screens. So this machine can do it. I know, I have tested it. As you can see right over there, we located a screen down here. So I'm going to use that setup for this machine. But the setup I'm going to make for the other one over there might be a bit different. I might lose this shelf, but I will make it modular so I can easily add one at a later time. There is no need for these speakers as I can just use the built-in speakers of the TV up here. So I'm going to remove those. No need to have some messy stuff and wires laying around. This need to have a clean, smooth finish. Down here by the floor, the base of uh, the stand itself is kind of a problem here because this is actually very functional. It works flawlessly and nothing's going to tip over. But I need to make something that looks much better. And one of the most important things about the new design is that I wanted to have a clean and professional look. It needs to be really slick and only have a single piece of wood that runs up in the center there. So no unnecessary stuff mounted on it. Clean and smooth look. That will look much, much better for the entire track and for the whole room. And while working on this project, we could just as well take a short look at what do you actually need a screen for when running slot cars. This is an old analog track. I'm running the race coordinator software. And this software allows me to have several features incorporated. And by using a screen, I can use lots of those features. First of all, if we zoom in over here, it can of course display the drivers. We can see how many laps they have completed, their current time and their best lap times. But it also has this fuel management part where we can refuel the cars. The faster they drive, the more fuel they burn. And this gives a new dimension to the slot car racing. So this is a really neat feature, which I really love. Beside the main screen, I'm going to use a screen on one of the sides that display all of the tournament standings. So while we race up here and get live results and everything, this changes as one car passes another. This one on the side will update and display who's the current leader of the tournament or championship we're currently racing. When I designed this new stand, I used 3D SketchUp, which is a piece of software I use a lot for these uh, CAD-based designs. And uh, I had a lot of features I wanted to incorporate, the ones I mentioned earlier. So um, it needed to be slick, it needed to have a firm base, so I was sure that nothing was going to tip over, and then it needed to look absolutely amazing. So um, it also needed uh, the possibility of adding a shelf, and of course, the stuff that uh, keeps the three screens in place 
needs to be as strong as possible so nothing will just tip over and drop down because some of these old screens they are actually pretty heavy so uh, I didn't want one of those just tipping over and crashing into my track and destroying it so uh, that needs to be really strong and reinforced without losing the slickness and the uh, elegance of the design So here on the floor I have everything that's needed to assemble two of my new uh, free screen display stand. Over here we have the base without its color plates and uh, as you can see I have used a lot of wood in this and uh, it makes it very sturdy and it also increases the weight and usually I would like to make things as uh, light as possible but as this is going to be the only thing preventing the free screen display from tipping over I actually wanted a lot of weight in this so um, a lot of wood in this simply to uh, get the weight up I am very confident that the structure itself will hold and then over here we have the top beams that's going to hold the free screens they have been reinforced in the center central area right here because the main screen that's largest will be there and then over on the sides here I will only have these smaller screens so I am confident also that this will uh, make sure that nothing breaks or is damaged and finally I have this part this is the central don't know what to call it this is the central piece that's going pillar that's going to uh, hold everything up and uh, the screens everything will be mounted on this and the ends down there are made so they slide into these holes on the stands so they can simply slide down there and then I am probably going to um, add a couple of bolts and nuts to secure them but they can actually stand without them so um, that works really well and over here the last part that's laying on the floor is the cover plates that will uh, seal all of the wood interior of the stand so it looks uh, as clean as possible so um, that's all of the parts just a couple of words about the tv brackets here i bought one of the cheapest designs i could get and this is also the slimmest design i could get and uh, this needs to be as slim as possible because the further it is extends from the top beam the more um, pressure it will put on the stand so um, it needs to be as slim as possible. I also think this from a design view looks the best. So uh, the only thing you need to think about when buying these are that they should be able to support the weight from the screens and uh, the large one that goes for the central screen is supports 48 kilograms and the other ones down here easily supports the smaller screens. So uh, the problem is of course that I am using old screens that I had laying around and this old television over here is actually pretty heavy so um, that's the, the largest problem if you are building one of these stands using newer screens the uh, weight will be less of an issue When I work on my hobby projects, uh, especially the ones with the uh, model slot cars and uh, railways, I always try to use some of my father's old tools. 
because he was really into those uh, railways and he just so much wanted a model railway set but he never got the chance to get one. We didn't have that many money when I was uh, young. So um, when I'm working on these projects as I have actually managed to realize some of the things he would like and I'm pretty sure I've inherited his spirit for the hobby. I always try to use uh, some of his old tools when building and constructing things for, for hobbies, and, uh, especially the model railways, but also the slot contracts. Now this is beginning to look like something. I have assembled both of the TV stands. We have one over here and we have one over there. And um, I haven't run the wires correctly or anything yet because I was waiting for some uh, cable canals I could run on the front here to hide all of the wires. But I would like to test everything before I proceed. And um, I ended up with the realization that using a laptop Few laptops actually support free screen setup where you can run different uh, images on all three screens. So I ended up installing a Windows 7 on a couple of old computers I had laying around and I've just bought uh, or ordered a couple of graphic cards for them that uh, can run free screen setups. So I'm just waiting for those in the mail now. So when they arrive, I'll install them in the machines and test it all. And after that, I will make sure that all of the wires is neatly hidden, so everything looks, uh, looks nice and clean. I got kind of lucky. The mail was very quick, and so was the uh, companies that I ordered this stuff from. This should hopefully be two graphic cards that is uh, capable of supporting free screen setups. And over here we have the cable canals. And I also ordered some additional wire and a power splitter so I can um, Add it up here with free outlets for the free screens so they will get their power on top here and I only need to run a single wire down through the center here and down below the stand in under the uh, curtains. So that would be a much much uh, a more tiny setup so I'm going for that. So now I'm just going to open those boxes and get those graphic cards installed because I'm real curious about testing this and seeing all three screens working on the same time. That's going to be epic. This is not exactly anything uh, expensive, something like that. I actually bought the cheapest graphic card I thought that would be capable of doing this. And I also did a bit of research just to make sure that it would actually work. So this. Gigabyte GeForce GT 730, 2 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM should be capable of uh, running the setup. I require it, so um, it's not going to run much graphics. It's only race coordinator and uh, might some uh, a bit of video, not much. So I think this will be more than adequate.
that's it. I am finally ready to test this stuff and I installed the graphic cards and I was ready to run off the wires and uh, get it up on all three screens up here. And I discovered that the graphics card had this connector, the white one over there. That is a DVI-D connector and I only have DVI-I adapters for VGA cables and I ran two 5 meter VGA cables from those two screens on the side and an HDMI from the center one. So it didn't fit in the graphics card. Luckily I had an additional screen laying around and I had uh, one of those cables that fitted the graphics card so I was actually able to test if it could run all three screens as you can see here that works pretty well unfortunately I'm going to use this tomorrow and I, I haven't got these cables laying around in the correct length so I have ordered a couple and I really hope that they can uh, be here on time usually when I order from this place they deliver the day after so uh, I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping that I'll get those two five minute cables but Disregarding that, this looks pretty awesome. We have the setup up there, we have all three screens running and the graphic card works. It can output on three screens as you can see here. They are three different screens, no clones, nothing. So I can actually use them for different purposes. And the general idea was that the race coordinator software is going to run on the middle one up here. I'll just see if I can get this mouse. We have the race coordinator software. And of course it's already running, so I'll just have to open it up. Just needed to move the keyboard. I went for this solution regarding the keyboard. This is very easy. It's a keyboard and I have a touchpad. So no mouse required. I can do everything from this one. So let's just open up Race Coordinator here. So I can give you an idea of what I'm going for. So we have the Race Coordinator software right here. And if I start a race, it will pop up like this. And this is the information I'm going to use on the main screen. This looks pretty good. You can keep um, tail off, you can watch your fuel, you can watch your lap times and so on. This is what is required when racing. But I also wanted to have our competition results on a different screen. So up here we can open race results. And these will be moved over to the screen on the left side over here and then full screen. There is a problem over here, and I fixed that together with a friend uh, a couple of weeks ago. So I'm just going to show you how to do that later. But the problem here is that it stretches the image. And I would really like to have more drivers on this table, around 15 or something like that. So we can host really great events. But this actually looks pretty good. So up here we have the main screen, the race, current race. And over here we'll have the... Uh, race results as the race progresses we'll have a live update and the final screen over there is going to show uh, who's going to drive next and so on that kind of information so um, this is beginning to look pretty decent i'm very happy about this as i showed you before i had a slight problem with the setup i made here and the problem was that the race results were stretched over the screen as i have changed the orientation of this to be in the vertical position instead of horizontal like that one over there. And I want more drivers on the list at the same time. And you can change this in Race Coordinator. So by taking a look at the larger screen, I have to locate the Race Coordinator uh, folder. Usually if you install it like it should be, it'll be on the C drive, probably on the program files. So this is a Windows 7 version, so um, you, you'll have to look for it yourself. But find the Race Coordinator installation folder, then you will find the data subfolder and the XAML folder and uh, in here you will need to find this file that is called race results located down here way in the bottom somewhere. So just race results, there we have it. Open it with using notepad, something like that, some text editing software. So open notepad. In here we have the race results and that's the, um, that's the window that will pop up on my left screen over there. But to change the stuff we have problems with, you will need to find this view box stretch fill area and go down some lines until you find this row definition height. We will change this to 800. 
That's it. When these changes have been applied, you can reopen race coordinator and we can try to start a race and see if everything turns out as they should. So hopefully we will have more drivers on the race results tab over on the left side. So let's just uh, check it out. We'll just add all here like that and then start a race and let's see what happens. Let's just get the window race results like that. And already here we can see that it's much much better. Now we have 12 drivers on the list. So it's possible to follow yeah, most of the drivers. This just looks really incredible. This is from the back side of my floor stand. And as you can see, this is a massive construction. And it still looks sleek and clean and tidy. So I am very happy about how this turned out. So the only thing I need to do now is to test it. As you can see, we have the one over here, we have this stand over here, and we have the other one in the other end of the room where I have the second race track. So now I'm going to test it and see if everything works as it should. Well, it's about time that we test this floor stand. And as a floor stand itself, there isn't much to test. The only thing that's important is that it looks good and that it looks great. And personally, I think it does. It is very sleek. I only have that one piece in the middle center there that keeps everything up. And then we have the three screens, no loose wires, nothing. Everything's hidden in that cable canal in the front there down under the large screen. And uh, the wires run down under the track, so they are completely hidden. This just looks absolutely amazing. And the only other thing we can actually test on it is uh, how it will look during a race. So I'm going to set up a race now and then I'm going to take a couple of laps so we can see if everything works. And uh, I'm just going to start a race. I have dragged over player 1 and player 2, driver here. So when we hit the start race we'll get this screen that displays all of the main info on this central screen. I'm also going to use a screen for race results. I'm going to drag that over here to the left. And then I am going to use a screen that displays who's going to drive next if we have several races. And it's this one that's called on deck. And I'm just moving it over here and enlarging it. So now I've just set up a single race. That's why there is no mentions on the on deck over there. But if we were hosting a competition and we had several drivers on the race over here, then the next couple of drivers that would race after this race is complete would pop up over there. My setup is made so I have made a call button right here, 3D printed this. This call button can uh, stop the race, it's kind of like a yellow flag. So if you fall off the track you can hit this button and then the race will stop. That way no cars will hit each other and damage each other. You can replace the car and start the race again. And uh, the, the um, what do you call, penalty for falling off the track is that uh, the driver who hit this button he will have to wait for three seconds before his car can start again. This works really nice and prevents people from just hitting the button all the time. So uh, let's just start this race and uh, take a look at how everything changes up here. So I'm just Five, going to drive a couple of four, laps nice three, and slowly. No competition two, here. One, go! And of course I'm only driving with a single car and so it's pretty, pretty difficult to um, maintaining several cars on the same time and making good black times. So, as you can see here, the race coordinator software also places the driver that's in front on the uh, top New lap so that they can actually shift places during race. So you need to be aware who you actually are and what your name is. Usually when we run races, we will drive by our own name up there, not the player one and player two. That's the standard setting I've made. So as you can see, this uh, process is quite nice and everything changes. The uh, race results on the left also displays uh, how many laps, what's the score I've made so far, and the uh, catch-up distance yeah, that I fell off because I was trying to talk at the same time. I am very poor at multitasking. So I'll just replace the car, I hit the yellow flag, and when I restart the race, I will not be able to drive for the Five, first three seconds. Four, my opponent three, will. Two, but as one, I said before, go. it's also displaying the gap, so you can actually keep track go. of compared to the average speed you are driving, how far you have to two catch up left. with the uh, other drivers. 
So um, this works really well. There's only one single feature I just want to test, and that's me driving into the pit and refueling the car. Pit stop started. And as you can see, this works flawlessly. It's really fuel. Really. fuel. So uh, this works quite nicely, and it looks so well up there on the screen. I'm very happy about this. Just take a look at it. Both the track and the display up here, this is really nice. This is a clear upgrade. And I especially with this it. nice sleek design here, very, very happy about it. If you enjoyed watching this video, and if you've been inspired by it, why not consider subscribing to the channel? That would mean so much to me, because I am trying so hard to raising the number of subscribers to this. And I really enjoy showing off all of my projects and sharing what I do so others can be inspired. So please consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, leave a like. And as always, feedback, comments, they are always appreciated. So please post a comment down below this video. I sincerely hope that you've enjoyed watching this video. I know I enjoyed making it. And I even got a couple of very nice floor stands for my tracks while doing it. So this has been an absolute success seen from my point of view. And um, if you enjoyed watching it, and if you are interested in building your own floor stands exactly like this one, I have decided to share the 3D model I made in SketchUp so you can get it for yourself and make an exact copy or you could of course modify it and make your own version. But I have decided to share it. I have always thought that the community working with slot cars and all kinds of hobby needs to be as open as possible. So if we create something, I really enjoy the thought of us inspiring each other and sharing. So um, I have decided to share the plans for this one. You can find more about that down in the description below the video. To round the video off, of course, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. That being said, I want to show you the final results of these floor stands and how they look inside this room. And I'm also going to give you a small teaser of a couple of the next projects I'm going to be showing you right here on the channel. So thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Let's just take and finish this video with a quick tour of my racing room. Over here we have some models I 3D printed and painted. I'm very proud of those. They are of course not racing related, but I couldn't help myself. I just needed to show these. Uh, the Terminator broke his arm. Someone might say he has been disarmed. No pun intended. I'm going to fix that soon. But over here we have the stuff that this video is all about. We have these slot cars. And um, I have two fixed setups right here. The first one, the green one, that looks most like an ordinary racetrack, is my Nightland race circuit. This is the first track I built, and as with all slot car tracks, they are a constant work in progress. So I'll be adding details and models and buildings and scenery and all kinds of stuff during the next couple of years, and it will probably never end. But I am so happy about this track, and we really enjoy driving on it. And as you can see over here, and it just went into a pause, so perfect timing. As you saw just before, it works flawlessly with the screen, uh, the free screen set up there. It looks so great. If we walk down here, we can see this track. This is the HK Apocalypse, which is a Borderlands themed inspired desert track that has been completely handmade. Everything's made in wood and it has been routed and all of the buildings are 3D printed. And then I have, um, yeah, I'm going to add some models here. You can see I have printed some of them now that are characters from Borderlands and I need to paint those up. But as with the other track, lots of work in progress. And this track is actually, it's not that large, but it is so nice to run on. Everything works just smoothly. And the lights all the way around it make it look incredible in the dark. So the free screen setup and the stand itself makes this look so sleek and tidy and that's just what I love, love about this new uh, floor stand I made here and that was the whole purpose of actually making those so I am extremely happy of how they turned out this just looks pretty good as you can see here we can walk around it and nothing distracts the eye it's just the screens so I'm very happy about that and then finally I'm going to show you a bit about what I'm going to do next because over here we have 
a drag race strip. I have already posted a single video about this, but I have gotten very far with the project. This is 8 meter long, it's a 3D printed drag race strip all the way down here, including the sidewalk. And all of these street lamps over here are actually working. And my next video, stock car video on the channel, is going to be about how I can break a car when it's coming running down here full speed. How can I actually stop it so I prevent it from crashing down into that wall with a F1 Haas flag down there. That would, um, the cars are too expensive to crash them into walls. So I'm going to figure out a solution that looks nice, that looks clean and works without damaging the cars. So that will be my next project. I also considered a couple of upgrades on these floor stands here. First of all, this part right here. When I walk in the room and it's dark and I'm not seeing anything because I am thinking about race cars and all kinds of stuff, then I might accidentally hit an edge like this. So a quick fix to this would actually be printing some yellow or very sharply colored pieces that will cover the corner and also be rounded. So I'm going to do that. That should be fairly easy. And uh, the printers will do most of the work. So it's especially easy for me. And I know it might look a bit strange if we have some bright colors on these, but I think for safety reasons, it's a good idea. So um, I'm going to print that. And uh, yeah, I think that was more or less a show of everything. I have uh, placed some tables in this area, just to mention it. So we have these cafe tables. So when people are racing on the two tracks and hopefully on the drag race strip too, then um, they can sit by all of these tables and enjoy something cold to drink. And uh, I of course still need to make a curtain for that track over there because that really improves the overall look of everything. Can hide all of those wires down there, as you can see with the curtain over here. So um, curtain for that one too. But that just takes some time. I've made a video about how to make those, so check that out if you haven't done so already. And uh, once again, I speak way too much sometimes. Once again, thank you all for watching. Really hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.